Preteens, Rose Quartz, and Mr. Universes. This is Mad Hair Patrick. So yeah, I'm going to review Steven Universe, the first season. Let me explain. Once upon a time in the year 2013, there was an original show that aired on Cartoon Network called Steven Universe. It was the first series to be created solely by a woman named Rebecca Sugar. And when it aired, it became an extravaganza series and one of the greatest anime shows of all time. It was pretty much Adventure Time all over again. For me, it's no big surprise I'm a huge fan of the show for its beloved story, characters, music, and animation. But I bet you're wondering, why am I only going to review the first season of the series? We already got five seasons and we already know almost everything! Well, you see, it would be an overwhelmingly tall order for me to review the full show if I had to look back all of the episodes of the series. Plus, it would be a lot of fun to do a seasonal review of it, much like how I did with Total Drama and Ninjago. And much like those shows and seasons, what matters is how well each season can hold up by themselves. It's very likely these seasons will get a lot of praise, but I'm on a quest to find, in my opinion, the best Steven Universe season. Welcome to another episode of The Wonder Reviews. Hit the rewind button because we're going back to the past. This is the first season of Steven Universe. <laughs> So, I'm gonna be honest, the first season started off slow for me when it comes to a few of the episodes. But let's talk about the overall series if you don't know about the show. A boy named Steven is a half-human, half gem who lives with three humanoid female gems known as the Crystal Gems. What are the Crystal Gems, you ask? They are the guardians of Earth that protect everyone from invaders and other worldly disasters. Steven is half gem because his dad fell in love with his mom, who is also a gem. But he has to learn how to control his gem if he ever wants to be a Crystal Gem. So what are the episodes that started off slow for me? Well, it's the ones where our main character screws up something by taking some ancient artifacts and he has to fix the problem that he caused. You can obviously see these problems Steven created in Freibo, Steven and the Stevens, and Onion Trade. They're not bad episodes, I do enjoy them, it's just I've seen this scenario a million times before. Keep in mind, this is only the first season, so we're not going to see any grand story arcs like the later seasons, with a few exceptions of course. But what makes the first season a good introduction to the series is the balance between Steven as a Crystal Gem and his life on Beach City. The Slice of Light aspect gives out some calm moments expanding the world of Beach City, and the interactions between Steven and the people are pretty cute and enjoyable. When he goes on his adventures, that's where we introduce the concepts of the gems in many different ways such as fusion, their history, and how they use their powers. For the episodes themselves, they introduce the concepts to help you understand the series, like Gem Glow, Sea Man and the Sword Fighter, and Future Vision. Others are meant to increase the hype train, like Mirror Gem, Ocean Gem, Warp Tour, and Jailbreak. And the show will have some funny moments like Cheeseburger Backpack and Garnet's Universe. There were even some sweet and even touching moments like Monster Buddies, Road to Scabbard, and Coach Steven. With all these episodes, they are interesting and a lot of fun. But believe me, this is only the beginning. So now that we talked about the series' premise and their episodes, how did these main characters make their first impressions? Let's talk about the main character, Steven. In this season, he's a carefree kid that loves to go on adventures and wants to uncover his gem's powers. It can happen in the earlier episodes, he can be a bit annoying, but he does warm up when it comes to his connections between his dad and his friends. For the Crystal Gems, there's Garnet, the leader of the team and the more serious one, Amethyst is the laid-back and high-spirited gem, and Pearl, a sword fighter that worries of Steven's safety. 
Not only do these characters have individual personalities, but they have strong relationships with Steven and have gone through the responsibilities to look after and train him with Rose Quartz being gone. Even the people of Beach City are likable due to their bubbly nature. Greg is Steven's dad that loves music and cares about his son, and he sometimes helps on the Gems' missions. Connie is Steven's best friend that also helps on their missions, and they both have a good chemistry in Bubble Buddies and Alone together. Even the residents of Beach City like Lion, Mr. Smiley, Sadie, Onion, and the Pizza Family had their memorable moments. The only characters I didn't like at least in the first season is Lars because here he's just the generic bully despite Steven thinking him as a friend. That and Ronaldo is just the annoying over the top supernatural truth seeker. But we do get some other gems in the show outside of the Crystal Gems like Lapis Lazuli. A gem that Steven befriends and she controls water and wants to be set free from her mere prison. And Peridot, an intelligent gem that gathers data with a little help of a tough brute named Jasper. Even Rose Quartz has a lot of character. Yes, she's gone, but we get a brief understanding on how she met Greg, what happened to her, and her gem is what makes Steven who he is today. The series has a huge list of characters even for season 1. Yet they somehow managed to make most of them work. The show has been known for its beloved characters, but is also remembered for its beautiful animation. I don't know where I should start with this. I guess I should start with the character designs. All the characters have a creative look rather be the humans, the gems, or even some of the monsters they face. But with the character animation, this is where things get exciting. The movements are smooth yet energetic in both the choreography and the action scenes, both of which are incredible to watch. And there will be even more creative moments with the movements on some of the gem creatures and Lapis's water powers. It would even have some creepy moments in episodes like Frybo, Cat Fingers, and Horror Club. <laughs> The backgrounds are beautiful to look at. Beach City is literally a city located at a nearby beach, while the other settings like the Crystal Temple and Spiral Tower are meant to capture the sci-fi fantasy look to them. There were even times on the show where they actually used cheaply animation in Future Vision and Garnet's universe. It's pretty adorable and funny at the same time. No matter what season you watch the show on, the animation is spectacular to look at in all of them. The last element of the series that fans remember from are the songs. Music is the main factor of the series. Most of the songs are catchy and upbeat. Some are calm and relaxed like Seaman and the Stevens, Giant Woman, and On the Road. Some have a bit of that rock and roll flair to it like Comet and sometimes Strong in the Real Way. And of course, you have one of the unique songs of the series, Stronger Than You, that's meant to define who Garnet truly is. The reason why these songs are so good is because of the choreography, the performances, and the visual effects make them unbelievable to both look and listen. Some of them even have their own primary style and instrument. Yeah, some songs like the Cookie Cat song are not meant to be a big deal like Stronger Than You or Strong In The Real Way. But no matter what, you will remember these songs similar to a Disney soundtrack. Steven Universe Season 1 made a great impression to the series with some enjoyable episodes, lovable characters, beautiful animation, and memorable songs. This is definitely a must watch to people unfamiliar to the show, and also worth re-watching to look back at the very beginning. Because without a beginning, the story won't flow easily. By the way, there's no big shot that this gets the Diploma of Destiny. However, I have plans to review the other seasons to determine the best out of all of them. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get my cheeseburger backpack and have together breakfast with my family.
Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe me for a new review and other project every week. I'll see you soon.